Hey friends, welcome to this week's video. I do want to start off by thanking you guys so much for the growth of this channel and being patient with some of the things that you may or may not like. I have been trying to expand the channel to review more things than just tech, but it seems that you guys have been okay with it. So I'm going to continue along kind of keeping up that mix. I will keep doing earbuds because that's kind of where this channel has been growing the most. But we also do things like gear, shoes, fashion, basically anything that piques my interest or is a suggestion from the community. So if you are on different socials, I'm basically on everything. So definitely follow me, especially on my new Instagram for this channel, which will tell you sort of what I'm reviewing coming up, some behind the scenes stuff. All of my shorts will also be there. So if that's an easier way for you to consume that, definitely check that out. But also keep track of us on this channel by subscribing and check out our live streams because we do sort of interact and get more live interactions with you know, the audience. And that's when I can get you guys' opinions on things. I can do quick reviews and I get a better sense of who is in my audience and helps direct the channel a little bit more. So we do those a few times a month. So definitely keep an eye out for that. But with that, let's start off with this review. What I wanted to do this time is because I'm cleaning up from the ski season. I literally have all my gear out for this review, but I won't be going over that stuff. But I have been trying to figure out how I'm going to pack this all away. But before I wanted to do that, I wanted to make sure I went over the, the bag that I was using through the season. Because it's probably been the one of the most pleasurable things that I've had, despite not thinking I needed it a lot much. Before, I was using a Dakine sort of carry bag. And I that, that was just something that I rocked with for my snowboard all the time. However, as I got more gear and my gear got heavier, carrying it on my shoulder kind of sucked, and especially when bringing it to airports, it wasn't all that great. So I came across a company called DB Bags that has done a lot of research with ski professionals and everyday carry people to make sure that their bags are meeting standards and the ruggedness that is needed while keeping a sleek design. It is a Scandinavian company that has just done a lot of work with interviewing, doing sort of group think sessions to understand what is the need of their users and build a design, you know, that is extremely nice and easy to use. And I think they've done a good job, not only this bag, but with all their bags, which we'll get into later in this review. But if you guys haven't heard this brand, you might have heard it as douchebags. So that's when I first heard about it a few years ago is I think their initial branding was douchebags. And if you look on their website, some of their old bags still have that douchebags logo. Obviously, while it's funny, it's a little bit bro -y. And with the price point that they're giving and the design that they put in here, I think they've changed it and scaled it back to DB so that it kind of appeals to a lot more people. It, you know, has a better premium sound and it doesn't sort of detract people from thinking that it's just a gimmick. So I think it's been good because their bags look a lot better. They have limited edition runs and things like that, that people get on board with. And overall, it's just better for the brand. So the thing that I have been rocking with is this guy. It is the Yarv, 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 uh, snow roller bag. And it is pretty, awesome just because it is adjustable. It's one of the first adjustable bags from a roll top perspective that was developed for the industry. There's been other roll tops on the top, but not as sleek as this and not as innovative as this bag. And again, it's called the Yarv. It looks like the Jarv, but it is a Scandinavian company and has an umlaut on the A. So I'm, I'm guessing it's called Yarv or Yarv. Um, but going forward on this review, because I don't want to butcher that name over and over again, I'm just going to call it the DB roller or snow roller um, just for, you know, not to offend anyone. And also so I don't trip over my words. But this is the bag that I've been using and I love it because of all the different the clasps, all the storage and just the versatility in which it is. So I'm going to cut away and talk about this a little bit more in depth while I give you a bunch of B-roll to talk, tell you guys what I love about this. The DB roller isn't just a roller because it has wheels. It has a nice feature that allows it to roll onto itself to pack down into something that's easy to stow away. This is achieved using the same mechanism to size your bag to your border skis. I love that I don't need additional attachments just to do this and it's been using the repurposed handle and loops to provide additional convenience without the added bulk. If you're like me, I use my snowboard and ski bag to stow away my gear for the season. However, I know that there's still some people out there that have racks or like to display their board or skis 
So this compression feature is great for them, especially because you can get this tucked away under a bed or table quite easily. Even when I was on trips, it was nice to roll down this bag and get it out of the way for the week until I needed to fly with it again. Let's unclip this guy and get it unrolled so we can talk about its pretty casing and the features of the outside. The main fabric is a polyester with a 900D PU coating for water repellency. The front panel is a polyester 500D PVC taro pin that is more ruggedized to resist the rough and tumbles of travel, and it also has waterproof characteristics to help snow brush off really easily. There's a lot of strong materials here, but DB has managed to keep this bag at around 4 kgs despite its size and carry capacity. The entire bag is integrated up and down with its patented hookup system that not only gives you its roll features, but also allows you to attach other DB bags like totes and backpacks or even clip another snow roller to this guy so that it gets the pressure off of your back and onto the roller. DB has also implemented D-rings and a ton of logical handles that'll help you lug this guy into check-in, onto buses, or into your chalet. The front ones are especially handy when the powder is heavy and you can't roll the bag around. The bottom has some sliding pads for ease of transport as well as some rugged wheels that can take a beating. We ran these through muddy highways and high pile powder and it didn't impair the rollability whatsoever. From a closure perspective, the DB roller has a nice smooth, chunky, and quality set of YKK zippers. You can also have a lock on this if you desire extra security, as well as DB has included a Velcro flap to both protect the zippers and give you a nice place for your name tag. Now that we've talked about how this bag protects your gear from the outside, let's get inside this bag and talk about carryability as well as storage security. So yeah, getting into this bag, it's actually really spacious in here. I could fit my whole damn body in here. I am a 5'10", and this goes a little bit further, 205 centimeters, about 80 inches. And I could literally use this as a sleeping bag if I wasn't as wide as I am. So definitely can fit all of your gear. Doesn't really matter if you have a long board or long skis for powder or for cruising. It has the adjustability to allow you to pick any of your size skis that you want, as well as do all of your gear. So one of the things that I particularly love about this bag is that no matter how much you stuff it, it's somehow designed in a way that it should fit within the compliance of the weight limits. So unless you fly like something stupid like American, where they make you separate all your gear out, you can stuff this with your helmet, your boots, your poles, all your ski clothes and everything, and not really have to worry about going over. I was initially worried about all of that. And then my friend Rodrigo just was like, just shove it in there, see what happens. And I was well under, I was 45 pounds with all of my boots, all of my camera stuff, all of my mid layers, all of my extra layers, helmet, everything that I could think of in this bag, and I was still under the limit. So as much as it was packed to the brim, I was still under that limit, and that's all that matters, especially if you're trying to fly. So that is one thing I appreciate about this design. I don't know how they did it, but it's really no nonsense. You don't have to worry about anything from that. So, so plenty of spaces in here, as I've shown you guys, but I am going to show you some loadouts that you know, give you an understanding of how this can be filled in no matter what you are carrying on to the mountain. Before we get into loadouts, let's talk about the inside storage. There's a little separation flap at the bottom that could potentially hold your dirty clothes, but in reality, I just use this to store the padded strap that DB includes, just in case I need to sling this bag over my shoulder. On the sides, there are two zippered mesh pouches, which are used to store waxes, brushes, gear locks, multi-tools, or even something like gloves. DB does include ski elastics to help flatten the skis for travel, but otherwise than that, there's not much other organization inside the bag. I feel like they could have added these compartments all the way up the bag for additional storage, but it's just enough for essentials for gear maintenance, so I think that's okay. In terms of the interior, it's made of a durable 600D PU coated polyester and utilizes a combination of polyethylene and EVA foams with the addition of ABS plastic pieces to give the bag a rib cage structure and pattern protection that will keep your gear protected while being thrown around. This design provides great protection without weighing you down. For this loadout testing, I will be testing both skis and snowboards with my regular gear, and that includes a Camelback hydration backpack, a helmet, toiletry bag, and all of my snow gear, which is base layers, mid layers, bibs, insulated knickers, socks, beanies, balaclavas, and my snow coat, all compressed into a packing cube. 
So starting with the skis, they get in there relatively easy with the boots loading from the bottom. You could carry two sets of skis in this bag by putting the second pair sideways to act as walls. However, you might have issues if you're using two different boots for each setup. But if you're a one setup person, you'll have enough space for all of your clothes, your helmet, and some other items as well. Moving on to the board setup, this is super easy. You could easily get a second board in here if you move the bindings, but for that second pair of bindings that you remove, you can easily fit this in that bag too. Just like skis, secondary boots will be hard, but the rest of your gear will be able to fit in here quite easily. So don't worry about overstuffing it, especially if you have a snowboard. And then lastly, if you really want to get fancy here, and I don't know, maybe you want to explore the mountain with skis on the first few days and then use your board once you figure out how to avoid all the traverses. You could technically get this done if you store your helmet and other gear in another suitcase. However, it does require a lot of... IMAGINATION! I think the struggle here is with the board and ski setup, you absolutely need two boots. While you can definitely get the board and skis and poles to work, the boots are the struggle here due to the way the bag tapers up towards the top. You see me here playing with a lot of different configurations to figure out how to make it work and have the ski boots fit somewhere between the board bindings. Alternatively, I probably could have taken off the board bindings to give me more flexibility and just put the bindings above the ski boots and it should have closed easier. Regardless, this took me forever. One eternity later. But if you can be patient or you just don't have that big of feet, there's definitely a way to get a hybrid set up in here. It just took the last bit of patience I had to get her done. All right, now that we found a way to somehow get this thing closed, we're not quite done packing yet. We still gotta roll the top because I don't have the tallest of ski and snowboard. Without rolling this down, the bag would droop, making it difficult to roll around, even if the bag was filled to the brim. You see this a lot with fixed length soft bags. Since the board or skis provide the structure, if it doesn't fill the entire length, you get that annoying sag. DB has fixed this by allowing the bag to completely roll and use the special handle provided to allow for the flexibility to attach at any length and really cinching down the bag so it fits your gear like a glove, thus giving you the rigid structure needed for easy rolling. DB Journey Snow Roller is a thoughtfully designed bag with premium feel, look, and features that make it a joy to tote around. This was unexpectedly my favorite snow gear pickup of the year and it made traveling a lot less painful. This bag comes at a high price of $350, but they tend to run sales both directly on their website and through resellers. So if you're into snow sports, it's definitely something I'd recommend keeping your eye out for. The DB Djarv Snow Roller, amazing bag, especially if you're a ski snowboarder or whatever you are, you'll love this. It's a little bit pricey, but I think it's worth the price and you can find deals on this quite nicely. So, you know, Older colors or colors that are less popular, you can probably get this for 250. I know they run for 350 and they do limited edition runs, but for some reason, no one really liked the, the raspberry, but I love it. I love it so that so much that I bought the backpack to match it. And like I said, they do a really good job about backpack design and it's very thoughtful overall. Obviously, I don't have enough time on this review to talk about this bag, but this is my new everyday carry for just around the city. And I love it. And uh, obviously, when I bring this on trips when I do snowboard, so I'm all matchy. But I do love their bags, and it's something that I think I can recommend for y'all. But uh, yeah, that's basically the review. I do appreciate you guys sticking around with me. If you did like what you see, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, doing all the things that you normally do on a video that you like and love. And I'll be there shortly with you guys with another review probably around snow gear because I'm packing it all away, like I said, and I want to make sure that there's a review on most of the important things that I enjoyed throughout the season uh, before I stow it away. But uh, thank you guys. As always, appreciate you. Peace.